All right, so they wanted to us to keep on time, so I'll go ahead and get started. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that were in Eva's last session, this should be a nice continuation from that. Uh, talking with about adaptive comparative judgment, kind of a tech theme for evaluating, and uh, we're going to look at how we can inform design. So, uh, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. So, my name is Greg Strummel. I'm a professor, assistant professor of engineering and technology teacher education at Purdue University. Um, basically, I prepare future secondary technology teachers it would, as it would be here. Uh, so we just added on the engineering piece of it. Uh, you'll see I did a pretty strategic thing here. Is I put my colleague on here, so if I can't answer any questions, I can blame him at least since he's not here. He couldn't make it. Uh, but if you have any questions throughout, please you know, just interrupt me. I'll show you whatever you want to see. Uh, maybe we'll hold the... Uh, Political questions till the end because as I visited schools this week, that's the first thing all the students have asked me about how we ended up in the situation we're in. So I don't have a good answer for that. But uh, anyways, and then people often ask, "Where's Purdue University?" So it's in Indiana. Just to get let you know, uh, there's a picture of our campus. Just to give you a little bit about myself too. So I'm actually I was born and raised here, and I throw that on there because we have some Swedish hockey players. <laughs> on our team right now, Carl Haft Haglin and Patrick Hornquist. I don't know if you have that or if you follow hockey that much, but I'm assuming you do. And then prior to uh, working at the university, um, I taught high school technology and engineering, so uh, higher secondary level, um, and there's some of my students there. So I had a lot of fun doing that, um, and that's why I moved on to what I'm doing now. So talking a little bit about assessment and adaptive comparative judgment. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of a challenge. So uh, first, in this room's a little different than the last room. It was pretty warm in the last room. So on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the hottest temperature you ever felt, okay, and 1 being the coldest temperature you personally have ever felt, how would you rate the temperature in this room? Right now? So think about it. All right, how, what, would, what would your five? Uh, what were you thinking? Five. Five, two. Okay. Eva? Four. Four? Seven. Seven? Four. Four? Okay. So we have a range between four and seven. Right now, I'm asking a couple people. Anybody have anything beyond seven? Last time, I would have put on an eight. Anybody had anything below a four? Okay. Probably not, right? So if you look at that one little simple test, the range from people in here. Uh, you know, from four to seven, essentially, uh, when we're evaluating the temperature of this room, right? And it's all kind of based on our prior experience or prior uh, knowledge. So that becomes a, a trick when we're doing some evaluations and doing assessment of design tasks that are very open-ended, where you know we're using traditional rubrics. So uh, when we look at that, you know, when we're using a rubric to do a design task, because in technology and engineering education, we're doing open-ended problems. Right? They have to create solutions too. Solutions can be whatever. So there's no single right answer, right? And then you run into trouble um, with how you're going to fill out the rubric is what we traditionally would use, right? We go down the rubric and we assign, well, they got five points for this one, four points for this, three points for that, perfect. Now, then what do you do with the next one? You're probably like, well, uh, well, this one's a little bit uh, better than the last one I just looked at, so I'm going to give a little bit higher scores than this one. Then you get to the next one, okay. This one's even better than that one. Now where did I go? I kind of ran out of room. So I know you've all kind of felt that as, as you did, but so, but that, a lot of that's based on, too, like I said, your background. So your version of a warm room, especially if you're in the last room, may be well, drastically different than somebody else's version. So you may have uh, spent a summer in the desert, uh, so your um, idea of hot may have been a lot different, or you may have been even further north than, than here. Uh, so you may have a different opinion on cold. So traditional rubrics uh, are what we use to try to solve that. But assessment is an inexact science, and you know, kind of the nature <coughs> of it. So, but you know, if you had the temp uh, a rubric for the temperature in the room, so you know, what could it be? If you know, if you sweat, is it you know, is it too hot? If you have goosebumps, it must be cold, you know, but how cold, how warm, how hot. If you sweat, does that mean it's a 10 on the scale? If you do have goosebumps, does that mean it's a 1 on the scale? So those are the type of questions that you're asking. 
So let's do this a little bit different way, a little different type of uh, uh, assessment task. So if I were to ask a different type of question, I guess, and just give you two options. So which is warmer, inside this room right now or outside the building? Yeah, inside the room. Anybody think it's warmer outside? <laughs> okay, so, well, we're, we're all in agreement there, right? So, but how did you know it was warmer in here? Did you use a rubric? You just, you just knew from your professional experience, right? So, uh, you didn't really have to go through criteria on that, uh, on this instance. It's a simplified example, of course. Uh, but that's kind of the beauty of, and you know, a good part about AC, ACJ, which is Adaptive Comparative Judgment, okay? So you'll hear me say ACJ a lot. That's what I'm meaning. I apologize, because I'm used to say it. Adaptive Comparative Judgment. It's kind of moving away from uh, criteria and rubrics for completely assigning scores to, to, um, to design projects, portfolios. Uh, but then it, it's really a judgment between two pieces of work in a series until... Uh, you know, you're comparing them, it's adaptive, where you compare winners that have the same win-loss record as other ones, and it starts to build kind of a rank. So, uh, really changing that to something that's intuitive is, and easy. So, uh, you know, it's based on a theory where a human intuition uh, is a little bit easier when you have two things to pick from, right? And really that's what you're doing anyways with the rubrics, you're still comparing them with each other. So we'll talk about that. Don't start throwing things yet with norm reference grading and stuff like that. We're not necessarily talking about that. But using this kind of method of judgments between students' work uh, for some different purposes. So it's measuring without scales. This guy, Thurston, it's been around for a long time. He came up with a lot of uh, comparative judgment, just saying it's more reliable and more valid when teachers are able to make judgments between holistic judgments between two items versus using a rubric. That's kind of his, his theory, so. Oh, and it kind of says it there. I forgot I put that on. So, it, how many people were in the EVA session? The last one? So you heard, you heard a little bit about this and what uh, she was talking about with her study. So she employed this method for her study. But essentially, you know, you could do a couple different things. So you could be comparing portfolios of student work. So if you give them an open-ended design challenge, they may be documenting their process along the way, some type of electronic portfolio, you upload it to the system, and then, and I'll show you some examples of these systems where it'll flash up one portfolio and another one next to each other. You can zoom in, look at it. Uh, you can just look at one, look at the other, and then you pick which one you think was the better one out of those two. You can provide feedback, and then it will give you another pair. You know, you'll look at it, provide your feedback, click which one, gives you another pair. And then it becomes adaptive once it starts um, comparing the ones of similar, instead of comparing every one to each other, it saves time by comparing ones with the same uh, win and loss records too. So it starts to adapt. Right, this is a computer program. Yes, so this, this one. So this actually came from a method, this judgment, uh, the law of judgment has been around for a long time, uh, early uh, in the 20th century, where they actually started where uh, what he did was actually lay all the samples of work out on a table and kind of, it's like sports. I mean, it's kind of how the rank of the uh, competition works in sports. So you put them next to each other and start moving them up in a, kind of a bracket type of format. Um, so that's how... Uh, that originated. So it doesn't didn't have to be uh, computer based, but the ones I'll show you are, and they use that al an algorithm for making it uh, faster, adaptive. So, but it doesn't have to be a portfolio either. So, um, you know, it could be an essay, uh, comparing two essays between each other. Uh, it could be a video of a presentation that they're giving. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, just pictures. Um, so actually where the company that developed one of the software programs I'll show you actually started using it, well they mainly use it for uh, like perfumes. So they would have people smell uh, different scents and then say which ones they like better until they figured out 
which one of their scents is the best for the perfume company, and that's what you can do. So, it's kind of the same thing. But, so how does this actually work in a teaching environment? So, you're not really using a rubric to tally the score. Okay, you can kind of separate that. That doesn't mean a rubric is thrown in the garbage and don't ever use it because students still need to know what they're actually going to be you know, evaluated on. So what's the purpose of the challenge they're doing? So rubrics are still there, but it's not necessarily used for assigning the scores. So how does this work again? Sets of students work, uh, are paired to get each other and identifies which one's better ho holistically based on that rubric. So you should uh, when we have judges that go through and compare these, whether it's a teacher or a panel of judges, they study that rubric so they kind of know what they're looking at, or they're already experts in the field. As a teacher, if you're teaching engineering, design, or technology, uh, and you've been doing it for several years, you're probably the expert in the content that you're teaching as well. So you can make a whole uh, holistic judgment as well. Uh, and that process is complete, uh, repeated until you have a rank order of all your students of all the not students, all their projects, all their projects, whatever you're evaluating. But what's really important is that if the system that we have collects uh, the systems that are out there. I'm not, I don't work for either one of them that I'll show you, so I'm not selling it to you. You can use it if you want. Uh, but it collects feedback every time you do a comparison. And that stays with each one of the products or projects that you're uh, comparing the whole way through. So again, get the rank order and you have all this uh, deep feedback that you can share with your students. And then you start talking about, oh, you know, why is this one better? Why did this one work better? And, you know, actually use that to inform kind of relearning as well. Uh, and it can be done as a single group or a single teacher or as a, a group of judges that you assemble. So if I was setting up a big um, project in Earth, uh, I had another one, but I, oh, there you are, right? Sorry, I looked over you. So, uh, uh, I know with your project, you have uh, students, the students in your class are, are looking at coming up with a, identifying a problem in the harbor and developing a solution to it, and they're designing a mock up and a technical report from it. Um, so, and you have judges coming in from uh, municipality that are actually experts in design that are going to evaluate their or judge their panel uh, of designs that they present at the end. So this could be the same way of doing that. You bring that expert panel in and actually set them up uh, as the judges. So maybe not as a teacher, but then you're collecting feedback from external experts in the area as well. So you're, then you start looking at that feedback and you're almost doing your own action research in your classroom at that point. So uh, adaptive comparative judgment dynamically refines the ranking of student work through a series of judging, judging rounds. And like I said, it's adaptive because at some point it compares, starts to save time by comparing students' uh, products with that have similar win and loss records. And what starts to happen though is as you're making those rounds of judgment, uh, you'll start to see a separation uh, with different uh, sorry, projects. So you could think essentially where each one of these letters are, and just throw that out with the grading part. I'm not talking about grading yet. But those would be different student portfolios, different student videos, uh, different pictures. Maybe they drew, you know, the, the challenge was designing a logo, maybe, um, you know, they would rank kind of along that scale. You'll see that this actual sample that I use is somebody used it to assign letter grades for this. And it can be used that way, it doesn't have to. But then you have a collective professional consensus from the group of judges or yourself or teachers across different classrooms if you're teaching similar content uh, as to the rank order of the success of their designs or their solutions at the end. And then, as you saw uh, Eva Hartel speak, um, what happens is once you're doing these rounds of judgment, it produces a very high reliability that, uh, because you're going through multiple rounds, as, as to where those students would rank, too. They're way, uh, a lot more uh, reliable than 
just assigning scores on a rubric, too. But I see, like I said, there's two different purposes. I'm not saying we should compare every, one student should always fail and one student should always have an A and then we fill them in in between. But we can use it to our benefit in some of those. So there is a free website. It's called No More Making, or No More Marking, sorry, dot, uh, dot com. I'm going to show you an example here uh, of how to use it. It's, it's a little, you know, can be a little fussy. You have to, might have to play around with it a little bit, but I'm still kind of learning it too, so I apologize if it doesn't work too well. Uh, but you can upload whatever you want. It, for the, the free version, it can only be a PDF. If you pay for it, then I think you can upload videos and stuff too. But like I said, I'm not here selling it. You can also do this without uh, a program. You can lay them out and have judges rank them that way. Uh, but what I did is I uploaded some random pictures uh, from uh, Hanaga. I'm, I'm terrible at saying the name. Hanaga. Hanaga. <laughs> okay. So uh, I guess the idea would then be to kind of judge them based on which photo you would like to use to bring tourists into the, the region. So uh, I don't know if the pictures are actually from here or not. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, good. And some of them. As I was uploading them quick, they were sideways or smaller than I wanted, but I'm just showing you an example. So, or I'm not showing you an example. Okay, so, uh, you can see that. Right, so this is kind of the, the platform that you would show, uh, that you would use, like I said, not selling this. Uh, you can sign up for free. <laughs> what, I, what do you do is you create a new task. So this one was the photo samples. Okay, it's down here now. You can see that I've already done 202 judgments out of 240. It will assign judgments um, based on how many you need to make to be the highest reliability. Uh, this one doesn't work too well because you can see I hit a very, very high reliability rate between two judges, probably at 100 judgments. So once you get to a higher reliability level, you can you can stop because then you're you know you're at that point you're wasting time because it's only going to get a little bit more reliable after that. Um, then you just go to judges. Uh, you can send a, it will send a link out to who you want to be a judge. So if you have five technology teachers at your school and you send a link out to all of them, they can go through and click on it uh, and help you out with that. So. Let me go ahead and look at this. Go to the judges. Okay, so <laughs> it says you have 37 judges, judgments to make. I don't think we need all of those. It's just telling us. Uh, all right, so. The, once again, this platform is simple because it's, it's free. Um, but you'll see you have left and right up top. And then you have your spot where you can click and put feedback in. And you have your two examples here. So these are two photos that I just randomly found. Um, so right or left? Which photo do you think better represents the region? Right. The right one. Okay. And then I would put feedback in, but you know. You can put that in, yeah, but you can put in why you would do that. Okay, so here's one of the examples where I upload when I didn't take a lot of time, and I apologize, and I didn't realize the, the image was small. So, what one would you like on this one? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a little fuzzy. Left one? The little one? Okay. What about this one? Well, so the idea was that you stick with the same judge for the one round of judgment. So I know a couple people want to jump in, but that's fine. So shout it out, right or left? Left. 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 Okay. And then. Right. Right. Left. Okay. <laughs> so there's some arguments. A little sideways picture. Okay. So and I'm not going to go through all of them. <laughs> How, I like that little one. <laughs> I actually found this. I found this image. I really like this one. So, uh, 
Um, I thought it was nice. But what will happen is, too, it actually, you'll notice that if we did this a little bit longer, it would start to get harder to make those choices, because then what it's doing is starting to compare the ones that are winning more with the ones that are also are, are winning, and it uh, compares the ones that are lower to the ones that are on the same level. So, And it starts to tease that out until you get that complete rank order. So you can keep doing that on this free one. I'm going to try to show you some of the uh, results that you would find. Like I said, I'm not as familiar with this one, but we'll make it work. So I can go back to the photo sample and okay. So over on the right, it might be a little bit small for you to see. I can refresh it at now. You see, there's more judgments. My reliability level didn't go up any because it really didn't make that much of a difference. But so a while back, it already said, hey, we, we're pretty uh, certain that this is the actual rank order based on the judge's uh, opinion. So um, and then, let me see. It should be, hopefully it lets me download this. I forgot I switched computers. Let's go download it on my computer. Let me try. Oh, here we go. That's why. Uh, nope, that's not it. Well, I thought I would show you some of the data. Okay, so I'll just hop through. All right, so what it does, and you can try this. I don't know why it's not downloading here. My computer works. Maybe I'll show you if we have a minute at the end. But it, it gives you a spreadsheet. It'll give you the rank order for each one. It gives you some other information, like should it, you know, should it be here. And then you can ask, actually get all the judges' feedback with it as well. You can total it up and start using it to inform uh, kind of formative feedback in the classroom. Not necessarily to say, hey, your picture is terrible and yours is really good. Okay, but to start collecting that feedback now. Once, once again, this is kind of a new in the classroom, so there could be issues like do you make a kid feel really bad if there's you know, at the bottom, or you know. So those are things I'm not saying aren't completely figured out yet. But you know, there's ways to use it uh, for your benefit. Okay, Okay, so I just wanted to show you another example of another system. It's called Comparisess by Tag Assessments out of the UK. A lot of this work has been done in the UK. Um, but what what will happen here, this one is a paid for service. Um, so you'll see that I'm signed up for a judge for this task. I know it's small on there. Uh, it says I need to do 36 judgments based on what's considered will, will give you reliable results. So this this one's a little bit easier to use. Uh, just uh, well, I guess that's what you pay for. But uh, you know, so choose wisely. But it's comparing uh, primary students' uh, essays. Okay. So you can see that there's A on the left, B on the right. What I can do is I can scroll through. Uh, I can see what they're writing. Uh, you can zoom in so you can actually read it. You can zoom out. Uh, then I can go over here. You know, I can do the same thing. Take a look at this students, read through it. Um, you know, if I want to see a better look at it, I can just look at one at a time. Or you know, I can go back to A, I can go back to B, A and B, and compare those. So I would read through the. Ideally, I would read through those, take a look at it, and then I would go ahead and click compare, and then it's going to say, okay, basically put the feedback in from both of the portfolio or both of the uh, essays in this case, and select the winner. And are you sure this? You know. Is that your final answer type thing? Okay. And then, you know, it tells you the status. 
and then it starts collecting it. So, yeah. okay. so this one is called, well, they actually changed it now. It was compare sets, but now I notice on here. <laughs> I knew they were changing the name, I just didn't know when. Let me, okay, so it's crowd assess now. Because then, the idea too is that you could, you know, you're not, you don't have to just be a teacher doing it on your own. Uh, you know, I can bring in judges for my classroom all over the place too. Especially, I was thinking of your project with that too. So, now that you're taking pictures of this, hopefully they'll, they'll pay me for yeah. introducing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'll share with you some more stuff at the end. Alright, so, putting it to work, grading, what does that mean? So, I, it doesn't have to be norm reference grading, comparing students to each other. You can use it for other things. Maybe you do. You know, that goes back to the argument that in real life, uh, you know, if I was an engineer and I was producing products and my products consistently did not work, you know, what happened? So, you know, there, there are arguments on both sides of it. That's all I'm saying. Just like they said this morning, you know, never say you're certain on anything, right? So, uh, that's what I'm doing. I've seen people do this where they actually have kind of quadrants along that rank order. So each one of these are the student portfolios, and then, oh, they can say, for this part of the product project, these students will have an A, B, whatever. But then that's not the only assessment. So that would be an assessment more of their process or just the product, and you combine those together. So it, only, it could only be a fraction. That's what I did with my engineering students at the university. Um, the other argument is that all assessment is relative. Just like I said, when you, you first start using a rubric on a student and you have their portfolio, you're going through it and assigning scores, what do you do with that next one? You get that rubric and said, okay, well, that last student did this, so, and this one's better than that, so I'm gonna give it a couple higher, you know, higher points. Then you get the next one. Well, this one's a little bit worse, but a little bit better than that one, so I put my scores in. I mean, that's, that's the argument that they use. It's not my argument. But uh, I see what they're saying. I, I know I, I'm, I was guilty of that, and I don't know if that's guilty of anything bad or not, but it's just something we naturally do. So their, their argument, and I say there, is I thought I had the uh, quotations there, that Rick, Richard Kimball and uh, Alistair Pollitt, they're the big people in the UK that, uh, that do that. But as Eva talked about, if you were in her last section, what you can do is start to pull out exemplars uh, as well. So you can say, well, this one is consistently ranked the best. Maybe I don't even share the, the, the rank order with my students. But next year's class, I know that this is an exemplar to use, or I could show it to the class. You know, there's arguments whether well, showing an exemplar to a student is a good thing because I know if I gave my students an example, what do they do? They just do this. And give me that example back, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there's things with that. But I think the expert and panel feedback is which uh, the, the best part. And formative assessment and peer review. So what we're setting up is students doing this with each other's work. So they can give each other feedback. Not a grading tool, but a way to say, uh, you know, if I'm sitting there, I'm going through and preparing these, oh, well, uh, John's portfolio, oh, he's really, he did this, I didn't think about doing that. And maybe it starts to inform their own learning from each other in that aspect. So, that's one way of doing that. So, I did a little bit of research, I'm gonna share with you that now. Okay, I don't see the, the warning sign yet. So, uh, authentic problems, real uh, context, design challenges are definitely the big thing, right? Ever, Everybody should do these real-world problems, problem-based learning in their classroom. It's a big push for it, right? If you're doing that, it's a challenge to assess in a way that's efficient, meaning, uh, I mean, I know you've all been there, where you bring the, the rubrics down, and four hours later, you've only graded one class of work. And so, is there a way that can be more efficient that is reliable and valid? So we just wanted to look at an alternative form of assessment using uh, ACJ, Adaptive Comparative uh, Judgment, to see how it could be used in, uh, in assessment of design challenges. Okay. 
Uh, so really look at the ACJ assessment approach in contrast to traditional rubrics for design projects. Okay. I think I'm getting the, the note that my time will soon be over. So we looked at a couple of research questions here. So what relationship, if any, exists between uh, assessment results of open-ended uh, design projects using a traditional rubric or ACJ? What exists between the performance, essentially the rank order that comes from ACJ, and the actual performance of their solution at the end? Okay. Uh, and then what is the relationship between the time dedicated by the teacher for the, each judgment to how reliable that judgment is. So, can it be a more efficient method? Because re research shows your first instinct, where you, when you take the least amount of time, you have a, you make a better decision, essentially. It's more reliable. The longer you take to make these comparisons, it actually becomes more unreliable because you're second guessing yourself and all of those things. So, uh, what we looked at is 16 university engineering students. They're in their introduction to engineering design course. Uh, and we gave them a design challenge that they had to uh, follow. And we collected that design data, their, uh, their notebooks, and the actual pictures of their prototypes they produced, and the performance results. So, uh, and then the professor used the traditional rubric, and a panel of judges used ACJ. Uh, but they weren't looking at the performance at that part. They were only evaluating them on their portfolios. Uh, and then we did a correlational analysis of the data. So the problem design had to deal with uh, access to clean drinking water in a developing nation after the onset of a natural disaster. So they had to create a device to filter uh, water. water. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, to reduce the turbidity, essentially, what they wanted to do. So we could actually collect quantitative data from it, from testing their devices and saying, well, yours reduced the turbidity the best, and yours is meeting the challenge the best. So you can see their, their drawings, one of the devices, and then uh, their testing scores. This is the traditional rubric, so you can look at just the categories. Did they do research? Did they come up with multiple ideas? Did they select the proper materials? Um, you know, how well did it perform? Did they revise it? How did they test it? And just keeping a notebook. And then, it's a little hard to see on here. So this is what would all be together, and this is uploaded into the ACJ platform that you saw, the second one. And then you can zoom in and see all the different parts and compare this to each other. The judges did. So looking at research question one, we were looking, so the idea too is you could use this and do research with action research in your classroom if you're doing that. Uh, it's pretty easy, but with this, we want to look at the relationship between the traditional uh, rubric scores and the rank order at the end, uh, just looking at the design portfolios, um, and then that would actually you know, allow us to make a recommendation that ACJ um, you know, aligns with current traditional assessments. So just, you know, here's their portfolios, here's their rubric scores from the professor, and then uh, their rank on ACJ from the judges and turbidity. But the only reason I'm showing this is that you can, sh what we're looking to see is how they relate to each other across it, to see if this is a valid form of assessment. So we did a rank, uh, spirit rank order correlation. Essentially what we found is that um, the results, the scores that were from the, the rubric uh, were significantly co correlated to the rank order. So the highest score on the rubric by the professor was most likely the highest ranked uh, in the ACJ method. So, you know, well, basically we're just showing the alignment between it. So looking at the same two, so if you're doing the rank order, it does align with the grades from in this situation. So, uh, and then we looked at the individual components of the rubric, and it was significant, significantly correlated between all of them except performance, which makes sense because we removed the performance data from it, and research. And the reason because of that, it's really hard to tell you know, how much research did you do unless they actually were writing everything down. So that was a little bit odd category. Looking at research question two, um, we wanted to look at the relationship between the traditional rubric and the rank order 
and also the performance. How well did it reduce the turbidity of the contaminated water sample? Uh, to see how we're really assessing. So you don't need to look. This is just all of their turbidity scores after multiple iterations of testing their device. And you can see, hopefully, they went down. Uh, some of them didn't go down too much. But then we did the correlation between those. And what we found, which is actually really interesting, so the AC rank and the rubric score were, were significantly correlated. So the highest rank you know, on the, in the score, or in ACJ, uh, was most likely the highest uh, scored on the rubric. But they did not correlate with the actual performance results. So, interesting. So, you could have a really good portfolio and not have a really good design. That makes sense, but then you want to start to think about what are we really assessing then? Are we assessing how well they can put things in their portfolio? Or are we assessing how well their solution is going to perform? So, uh, you know, I don't have an answer to it. I know that. So based on this, you know, we're uh, skip that. Yeah, so what we're really assessing is you know, how well their their uh, their portfolios are doing. So the argument could be is that you, you're assessing the process, but not the actual uh, effectiveness of their product. But should we be doing that? That's up to you. Uh, then we looked at the time for judges. How how much time it took them to make each one of these a judgment, uh, and if it actually meant that uh, it impacted the results at all. And I could spend a long time going over what this actually means, but the idea is that it can't be, it shouldn't be more than two standard, uh, uh, two standard deviations away from uh, the norm. So uh, if you look at that, nothing was significant. So if you spent 55 seconds on each judgment or two minutes on, on the judgment, it didn't significantly impact how reliable it was that you, you made the right judgment, basically. So compared to the, the full rank order. That can take some time to explain, but the idea here is that the time really didn't have an impact. I can't say it's more efficient than a, a traditional rubric because we didn't compare the times between the two, but we can say that you know, uh, even using ACJ, you can do quicker judgments and it doesn't necessarily impact the reliability of the results. So, uh, and there are other research proving kind of the same thing as well. And I'm going to wrap this up for you. So the big thing is that the product, perf the performance for um, their product at the end does, does not align with their actual, the score of their process, essentially. Um, you know, so design portfolio success does not equate to a successful product, which a lot of times I know I told my students, hey, if you document all your, your, your design process, it's going to help you produce a better, well, I guess I was kind of lying on that one. Uh, successful designs not correlated with good grades. Uh, so in this situation, if you're evaluating their portfolios, it doesn't mean they had a good product, but it meant they had a good portfolio. Uh, so maybe we pres have to re revisit assessment practices. I don't know. So what are we actually looking at? The output of their design, the process for creating that design, their learning outcomes, most likely that should be at the top of the list. I think we're always doing that because the purpose is not really solving the problem. Or isn't the purpose trying to teach them the content we're supposed to be teaching them, the practices? So we've got to figure out you know, the content and what we are, are doing. So. I don't know. Maybe I'm walking away with more questions than answers, but uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, and out of time. So what we are looking at now, just real quick, is actually setting up students as the judges of each other's work and collecting that so they can inform their own design decisions from it. Um, looking at other people's work, providing each other peer feedback. And then also looking at taking videos of the process and the products and giving it to industry experts in engineering and engineering design and working backwards from the feedback to see what industry values. Mm -hmm. So then we can start to teach our, inform our teaching practice. And then the last one, I skipped over it, 
we are setting up a, a quasi-experimental study just to see whether actually look at the time it takes to do traditional rubrics and use ACJ and what that may be. So, uh, all right, it's a form of assessment. It's has reliable and valid results. Uh, time taking to do it doesn't necessarily impact the results. Uh, gives you a similar result as a tr traditional rubric anyways, uh, but you can get students involved in the assessment process, do more formative assessment, inform your design from it. And sorry, uh, I went to the very end, but I'd be glad to answer questions. You can send it to me, and thank you.